up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 acura mdx courtesy of bobby ray hall acura in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so today we're in the new mdx because for one my mother owns one and two we have this really cool interior color called like Azurite or Azurite. I can't say it. It's A-Z-U-R-I-T-E, but it is so unique. I've never seen a color like this inside of a vehicle before. So I'm a big fan of that. But not only that, you do get two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance with any Acura. You'll also get a better warranty than Honda, believe it or not. Four years, 50,000 miles, bumper to bumper, six years, 70,000 miles on the powertrain. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 MDX. First one being the base starting at $49,850, which is a modest $300 bump from the 2023 model year. Technology for $54,550, A-Spec for $60,250, Advance for $63,800, Type S for $68,150, and lastly, the Type S Advanced for $73,500. And by the way, that's the one we have today. And so for the last four trim levels, all-wheel drive is going to come standard, but for the first two, simply add $2,200 if you wanted to add all-wheel drive. That actually comes standard with the front-wheel drive setup. But as you can imagine, with all of these trim levels, there are a couple different power plants for the MDX. First one is going to belong to the non-Type S trim levels, and more than likely, it's going to be the more reliable engine. That is the 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 290 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 267 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,700 RPM, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know by the way we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time for this engine coming in at 5.7 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 26 on the highway for the front wheel drive 19 city 25 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive so not really much of a difference between the front wheel and all wheel so might as well just get the all-wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel but so then there is the type s engine which is slightly different it's a three liter turbocharged six cylinder putting out 355 horsepower at 5500 rpm 354 pound feet of torque coming in at 1400 rpm that power being sent to all four wheels through yet again a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters zero to 60 times substantially different coming in at 5.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 17 in the city 21 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the mdx wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's kind of like a turn dial labeled dynamic mode you turn that to the left and to the right it's going to give you snow comfort normal sport and individual then if you were to go with that type s you're going to get sport plus and lift so let me go ahead and turn that we're in sport and then if you actually turn and hold it's gonna put it in Sport Plus. Hey, and it changes the gauges pretty substantially as well. That is pretty cool. But anyways, what those drive modes will do besides change the gauges is adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, the steering sensitivity, the all-wheel drive system engagement, and in the case of our Type S, the ride height as well. So that is pretty cool. So now that we got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us in our mdx type s all right so if you press that d slash s button again that can put it in full manual shift mode it's going to tell you what gear you're in up on the digital gauges here so i'm going to put it in first gear in three two one yeah baby good sound whoa they're quick what the heck they're quick what's wrong what is wrong with this thing suv paddle shifters are supposed to be slow and lazy Dang, man, that was fun. Why are these paddle shifters so quick? And the second thing is, with paddle shifters, what you can also use them for is if it were to be snowing out here in PA, like it quite often does in the winter, you can use it for a little bit of engine braking and just do a little bit of downshifting with the paddle shifters so you don't actually have to hit the brakes and we're sliding off the road. So they're there for that as well. But having said that, they're also there for fun because paddle shifters are quick. I didn't expect that. And maybe it's because it's the Type S. I don't know, but 
They actually do react quick, so well done Acura. You did a very good job with your paddle shifters. But to give back full control to the MDX, you simply just hit that D slash S button again, and that's gonna give back full control. And let's find yet another straightaway, and let's put the acceleration here to the test with the MDX having full control, and let's see how quickly we can get our new MDX Type S here up to speed. All right, let's do it from a standstill in three, two, one, go! That sound, I can't get over the sound. That throws you, man. <laughs> that is fun. That is a little too much fun for an SUV, if I'm being quite honest. That is a good acceleration, without a doubt. And it really should be that quick in an SUV, but it's definitely not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway. Having said that, the other engine configuration, you're not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway with that either. That thing is also plenty quick, so. Either way you go with, you're gonna have some fun. This thing is definitely quicker than an SUV should be. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13 inch solid rear discs. And that's for the regular engine configuration. But if you were to go with that Type S, that brake size is actually bumped up to 14.3 inch ventilated front disc with four piston front calipers as well. As far as the 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 118 feet, which is plenty fine as well. That is sports sedan good. Typically SUVs, you get 120s, if not 130s, so 118 feet. That is incredible. And the braking feel, easily on the firmer side of things. It instantly brings you to a stop. So for me, I absolutely love the braking feel in this MDX. But anyways, that touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a double wishbone tight front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. But one of my favorite parts, an adaptive damping suspension also comes standard on every trim level of the MDX. Why do I like this? I like it because what an adaptive damping suspension is, is essentially gonna monitor each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but also tightening up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So it really gives you the best of both worlds. So you don't have to sacrifice anything with an adaptive damping suspension. So absolutely love that. And with the Type S, you actually also get an adaptive air suspension. So what do I mean by that? Essentially, when you put it in that Sport Plus driving mode or when you're going a little bit faster, that suspension is automatically gonna lower a little bit at higher speeds, giving you better aerodynamics. And of course, if you take it out of that Sport Plus driving mode, it's to raise them back up so yet again giving you the best of both worlds so i absolutely love that as well but overall as far as ride quality goes because we have both of those incredible suspension elements ride quality has been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today let me actually go ahead and uh take it out of sport driving mode let me actually put it in comfort so yeah ride quality has been perfectly fine as far as steering feel goes it does adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in so you're going to get a much heavier weight to the steering if you put it in sport plus you're going to get a much looser steering feel as you would typically expect from an SUV in a comfort driving mode. So I do want to say that as far as cabin noise goes, I got the air kind of cranked up right now. But other than that, it's been perfectly fine. You get very little road of wind noise coming into the cabin. So I've had no issues there. Touching on visibility, I actually can see great out the back. So 100% no issues there. Rain sensing windshield wipers will come standard on the technology trim level and up. So essentially whenever the MDX detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one last thing you gotta worry about there. I love that. And there is going to be a head up display that will come standard on the advanced trim level. So that's gonna project your speed, speed limited safety features up onto your windshield like I am currently looking at. It's a fairly large display as well, so that's pretty cool. So that's gonna better help you keep your eyes on the road there and help with forward visibility yet again. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Acura MDX. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Acura MDX finished in lunar silver case you were curious of our exterior color name but let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the VIN first character is the number five indicating that the new 2024 MDX is built and assembled here in the U.S. specifically Ohio but let's go ahead and start up front of course you're going to find that type S badging found on the front grill definitely looks good 
But if you don't go with the Type S, you're not gonna find that, obviously, and that front grille is gonna differ slightly dependent upon that as well, but massive Acura logo up front. Didn't used to be that large and in charge up front, but definitely is now. But one thing I love about the MDX up front is those jewel eye LED headlights with LED daytime running lights, of course, but definitely give it that jewel eye look and specifically even the fog lights down below, which by the way, come on the A spectrum level and up. They kind of have that jewel eye look for sure as well. So I love that. Of course, you get the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, headlights will turn on automatically for you, but you also get automatic high beams. So when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you though. So that is pretty cool as well. And then to the sides, down to the corners there, you do have some front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination, but that pretty much rounds out the front end. I love the look of it. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the MDX. All right, so Benel, let's see you around to the side of this one. Aluminum roof rails or gloss block roof rails will come standard on this one, dependent upon the trim that you go with. Chrome or gloss black window surrounds, same thing, dependent upon the trim that you go with. Rear privacy glass, though, is going to come standard across the board. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored, power adjustable side mirrors or gloss black. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals as well and actually the reverse gear tilt down feature is going to come standard on every single trim level as well so when you put the mdx in reverse they're going to tilt down slightly so you don't run over any bicycles or skateboards or whatever the case but if you wanted the power folding feature meaning when you lock the thing up it's going to automatically fold those side mirrors in go with the technology trim level and up but do you like that type s badging found on the front fenders again that's specific to the type s of course but taking a look down at the wheel setup they will of course differ dependent upon the trim level 19 by 8.5 inches for the base trim 20 by 9 inches for the technology a spec and advance and then 21 by 9.5 inches for the type s so not only do they get bigger with trims but they also get wider for a little better handling i suppose as well so that's pretty cool but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the MDX, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Gotta love these LED taillights. They definitely look dang good as well. And then just below it all, you will have dual exhaust outlets with quad chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the MDX, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate for all trim levels across the board, so love that. And if you were to go with one of those advanced trim levels, it's also gonna be a hands-free power tailgate as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity behind that third row comes in at 16.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, you can of course fold that third row down, bumping it up to 39.1 cubic feet. And then with all rows folded, that is going to come in at 71.4 cubic feet total. But in that cargo area, you can find some cargo lighting, of course. There are grocery bag hooks. There's some chrome plated tie down anchors as well. There is a cargo cover. And if you were to left up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find some in-floor storage then as well but then making your way up to the third row legroom that comes in at 29.1 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there there are some cup holders back there but to my surprise there's actually usb charging ports for that third row as well so love that but then make your way up to the second row legroom that comes in at 38.5 inches again six feet tall this is how much space i had back there Tri-Zoom climate control though actually does come standard for all trim levels across the board. So both driver, passenger, and the rear passengers together can set their own temperature. So I like that. Rear ventilation, of course, is going to come standard. There are USB charging ports for that second row. There's a 120 volt power outlet. If you were to go with the advanced trim or the Type S, heated second row is gonna come with the advanced trim levels again, and rear window sunshades coming with the technology trim level 
end up. I absolutely do love them. But anyways, then making our way up to the front seats, leatherette finish is gonna come with the base trim level. Milano premium leather coming with the technology trim level and up. However, there's gonna be a leather suede combination available for the A-spec and Type S trims. 12-way power adjustable front seats with power lumbar comes standard. 16-way power adjustable front seats coming with the advanced trim levels. And by the way, that comes with power thigh extensions and power side bolsters actually as well. But all trim levels are gonna get memory settings for both driver and passenger. That's not the Mercedes always likes to do, but I like that. So you got three different memory settings for the passenger seat as well. So that's pretty cool. Heated front seats coming with all trim levels, ventilated front seats coming with the A-spec trim level and up. Overall, seating was 100% perfectly comfortable. Why do you ask? Because the seams are vertical. I always harp on this in a lot of my reviews. If there's horizontal seams, a lot of times that creates awkward pressure points, but when manufacturers use vertical seams like Lexus often does, like Acura often does, and sometimes Mercedes, but not always, it's so much more comfortable. There's no awkward pressure points so though. As far as seat comfort goes, 100% on point. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It of course is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable for all trim levels across the board. So that's pretty cool. And you will actually get a flat bottom with the A spec and type S trim levels. And it will be heated as well for the advanced trim levels. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Acura logo on the one side. It actually says type S as well. So that is pretty cool. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and the engine hold button, that's gonna be your remote start so that's pretty cool as well but all in all it is all keyless entry with the push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents and so once started up what you guys are looking at is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that does come standard for all trim levels across the board i love that there's steering wheel mounted controls you can use that to adjust what is on there and of course when you change the drive mode it is going to completely alter the look of the digital gauges as well and that's the beauty of digital gauges you can completely customize the look of them with the colors and the loadout and all that fun stuff so i'm a huge fan of the gauges in this thing but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic moon roof will come standard for all trim levels frameless rear view mirror with home light controls for up to three different garage doors coming standard for all trims as well wireless phone charger all trim levels tri-zone climb control all trim levels brushed aluminum trim that does come standard but open pour wood trim comes with the advanced trim levels in case you wanted that 24 colors of ambient lighting coming with the technology trim level and up i love that stainless steel pedals coming with the a spec and type s trim levels and overall i think my favorite part is the combination with the open pour wood trim and this incredible blue interior finish i'm telling you guys after test driving and experiencing so many different cars they always have either the traditional black or tan leathers and to see something like blue or green i recently saw in a kia as well that's what i'm all about because i'm tired of seeing the same thing i like these fun colors and that's just my personal opinion but i do love the interior color here but anyways you do have a couple cup holders up here a little bit of storage probably for your key and within the center armrest it's actually two sections there that's nice but it's an okay amount of storage not the most i've ever seen but it's a nice kind of felt finish on the sides there usb charging port and 12 volt power outlet in there as well but Overall, because of the interior color, I absolutely love the interior in this thing. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. It is a 12.3 inch infotainment screen. It is not touch screen. However, you can control it by using the touchpad controller and buttons located kind of directly behind the shift buttons. And so when you use that, you can toggle between things like Bluetooth and audio streaming. There is wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So I love that it's wireless for all trims factory navigation system coming with the technology trim level and up of course you can check it your drive modes up there and your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems there are a few of them nine speakers is going to come with the bass setup 12 speaker ELS studio sound system coming with the technology and then for the a spectrum level and up you're going to get a 16 speaker ELS studio sound system so that of course being the one that we have today so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, so clarity 100% on point. Bass was plenty fine as well. You know, it's funny how the same sound system can sound different in different vehicles just because of the size of the vehicle and where the speakers are placed. I would say this same sound system found in the Integra is so much better. It's still dang good in the MDX without a doubt, but in the Integra because of the size of that thing, 
it's better there, but it's still excellent here in the MDX. I just wanted to say that. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the MDX in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but also a surround view monitor for the advanced trim levels, giving you that bird's eye view there to the right. And this is extremely high definition as well. So I actually love it. But anyways, that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation system, traffic jam assist, traffic sign recognition, lane departure warning, and forward collision warning then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, of course, let me start with staying extra excellent safety. It doesn't get any better than IHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Paddle shifters are surprisingly quick. That's another thing I want to mention because it surprised me. Like I said, there aren't supposed to be that quick in SUVs, but this one did a wonderful job with that. Digital gauges look absolutely wonderful. I like that as well. I love the interior color on this thing, that blue, that navy blue that we have in this thing. Hope it came out on camera all right for you guys, but I absolutely love the interior in this thing as far as room for improvement goes I, I think more space would be nice i mean if this is the largest suv by acura they either need to make a new larger suv to kind of compete with other larger luxury suvs or just make this thing a little more spacious i guess you could say because typically if you're looking at like a, a gls or something it comes in what 80 84 cubic feet and this one's coming in at 71 so i would just expect the mdx to be a little bit bigger or at least acura offer a larger SUV that's all I'm saying but also a better name would be pretty darn cool I'm getting really bored of the uh, the three letter names that uh, these manufacturers are coming up with I love that Acura brought back the Integra I wish they would change the TLX to maybe a legend or a vigor or something like that and I wish that they would change the names of their SUVs as well make it something fun uh, like a Kia Telluride or a Palisade like something that has meaning behind it and that is not boring like three letters but anyways that's just my opinion but let me know what you guys think of the mdx in the comment section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold